Today's video will explain the UML class diagram for the list class. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. The standard template library list is built from a linked list. This video will explain the UML class diagram of the overall list design, including all the member variables, as well as all the methods. Okay, so we'll start with list. So the name of the class is list. Member variables and methods are at this point in time unknown. Now I'm going to have a constructor, well, actually more than one, and a destructor has to be public. Now the list is going to be built off a linked list. So I need to have a pointer to the head node, and this is a type node, so I need to define node. Now notice that node only makes sense within the context of list, so this is a nested class. It turns out it is a private nested class, but UML class diagrams do not give us the ability to distinguish them. P head is going to relate to node by composition. Normally, we have a pointer, then we use aggregation. However, list is going to create and destroy all the nodes. And since it both creates and destroys them, it is composition. How many nodes? Many. Even though there's only a single node pointed to, there's going to be many in the collection. Now, node is going to have a P next and a P previous. So it's going to point to other nodes in the linked list. And so we're going to relate to each other by aggregation. And the reason why it's aggregation, because if I destroy one node, I'm not going to destroy the rest of the nodes after it. And since node does not create or destroy the other nodes it refers to, it's aggregation. How many? Well, zero through two. Zero, if this is the only node in the list. One, if it's the head or tail. And two, if it's somewhere in the middle. Next, I'm going to have size and empty. Now, I can iterate through the linked list to find out the size. But instead, I'm going to have a num elements. And this way, I can find the size in OSA1. And of course, empty as well. All you have to do is see if size is 0 or not. Now, I'm going to be able to push front, pop front, and access the front of the list. And this can require to access a T. In other words, a linked list can contain any data type we want, not just integers or strings or whatever. Therefore, a list is a template class. This also requires that the node have a member variable, which is going to store a single element of T. So therefore, data will be of type T. And just to make things more convenient, I'm going to give the node a constructor and a non-default constructor so that I can easily set the P next and P previous to the null pointer. And therefore, I won't have dangling pointers. I also need to be able to push back, pop back, and access the, the back. Now, of course, I could iterate from the front all the way to the back, but I'll take O sub n, and we don't want to do that. We want to access an O sub 1. Therefore, I must have a P tail, which is going to point to the tail of the linked list. I also need to be able to erase, insert, access to begin, and access to the end, all these with an iterator. And so I need to have an iterator class. Now, this iterator class is a nested class within list. This happens to be a public nested class because the client can access and instantiate an iterator, whereas a client cannot instantiate or access a node. Then it's going to have a pointer to a given node. Notice this pointer is by aggregation because if I destroy an iterator, I'm not going to destroy the node that it refers to. And how many? Zero through one. Zero if I am the end iterator and one if I point to an actual iterator in the list. You can learn more about the implementation of the list in the implementation section of the list chapter of the C++ data structures textbook.